3D platformers aren't the most popular genre right now. Every once in a while you get a sampling of options, but compared to the early 2000s, oh man, there was nothing like it. The heyday of 3D platformers was from the beginning of the Nintendo 64 to the end of the PlayStation 2. This was when the games that defined the genre were released. Super Mario 64 and Sunshine, Banjo-Kazooie, Jack and Daxter, Crash Bandicoot, Spyro, the list goes on and on. One of the games released in this era was Psychonaut developed by Double Fine Productions. It has all the elements you'd expect in a game of this type. Colorful and funky visuals, gameplay that expands as you unlock different abilities, and a super charming cast of characters. A game that executed the staples of its genre well, released in a time period where similar games were at the top of their popularity, it sounds like it should have been a huge success, right? Eh, not really. Although re-releases on digital marketplaces like Steam eventually gave the game a second life, the initial release on the Xbox and PS2 sold below expectations. In the first year, it sold less than 100,000 thousand copies, and the game's publisher, Majesco, left the gaming industry entirely not too long after. It's a shame that the game didn't initially live up to the sales expectations, because it's super well done and a total joy to play. The gameplay is fantastic, it's always throwing new things at you giving you new abilities and ways to interact with the levels. The early stages start you off with pretty basic platforming, but expand more and more over the course of the game. And no individual level overstays its welcome. They're all just long enough to introduce a new idea, challenge you with it in a few interesting ways, and move on. Each level has you going into a different character's mind. It's a fantastic setup for giving you a wide variety of environments, while still making sense in the context of the game. It might sound like a weird comparison, but it reminds me of the palaces in Persona 5. You get better insight into each character's personality through the way their mind looks and operates. Even aside from the gameplay, Psychonauts oozes personality and charm. The character designs are ugly in the best way, with distinctive voice acting to match. Every character has a clear, defined personality, and you can tell the developers took special effort into making each one unique. The writing is also some of the best I've seen in any game. It's not often that a game will make me laugh out loud at it, at least not intentionally. But with Psychonauts, the jokes are consistently funny, and it's not the kind of cheap, easy humor you'd normally find in a kid's game. It's ageless, in a way like early Spongebob is. Even though the visuals might be a bit dated, it's elements like the writing that make Psychonauts even better than a lot of current games in some ways. The creativity level is off the charts, and the game is constantly surprising you with new innovations. There's one sequence where you're being chased by a large enemy, but instead of getting a front-on view where you can see the enemy behind you, the camera is placed so you're seeing yourself from the enemy's perspective. This is the kind of thing I can't believe more games haven't copied, because it's so superior to the perspective where the camera is pointing behind you. I'm not a fan of these type of sequences in other games, because you can barely see what's ahead. The way Psychonauts handles this is perfect. It keeps you reminded that you're being chased, but doesn't compromise your ability to see what's in front of you. Another small detail I like is that when you pick a dialogue option, the main character Raz actually says the full line. I know it's not a huge deal, but one of my biggest pet peeves in games with voice acting is when a character says something different than what their text box reads. I get that you might not have the budget to voice every line in a big RPG, but in those cases I'd prefer no voiceover at all for those lines, instead of saying the wrong thing. So anyway, Psychonauts. It's a great game. One of the best 3D platformers released in this era. So why did it not sell well initially? I think mostly it comes down to timing. It was released in 2005, which was the tail end of the PS2 and Xbox life cycle. Gaming was moving on to bigger things, and the time of quaint little platformers was coming to a close. The following year saw a revolution in the standard that big budget games could meet. Games like Gears of War, Oblivion, Twilight Princess, Metal Gear Solid 3, and Final Fantasy XII were all released in 2006. Even though not all these titles were on next-gen consoles, there was still a clear transition in gaming, where smaller titles like Psychonauts weren't going to cut it. I think it was also a fatigue of the 3D platformer genre that claimed the game as an unfortunate victim. All of the games you see here were released in the few years leading up to Psychonauts, and when you've played even a portion of them, it can be hard to justify spending money on another, especially when next-gen consoles are knocking at the door. There's also the fact that Psychonauts wasn't based
focused on any established IP. I know that shouldn't matter because it doesn't say anything about the quality of the game, but when you're browsing the aisles of EB Games in 2005, where any gaming media had a much more narrow focus, I think you're more likely to pick up a game from a franchise you're familiar with, rather than taking a risk on something new. That's not to say that the game couldn't have been based on a bigger IP. Change up a few character models and voice actors, and the game could have easily been fairly odd parents, the Psychonauts, and probably would have sold significantly more. But even though this may have been a better option at the time, nowadays it's better that it didn't happen. Psychonauts stands on its own as a unique property with tons of potential, and we don't have to be relying on licensing agreements with Nickelodeon to get modern ports. The crazy thing is that if things had been just a bit different for Psychonauts, it could have easily been a bigger franchise than it even is now. If it had come out just a few years earlier, or maybe with a different publisher, the game could have easily taken the world by storm and had a massively expanded scope of the franchise. The awesome summer camp vibe and colorful cast of characters makes you feel like you're playing through a Saturday morning cartoon, and if the game had been released in better circumstances, I think a deal for a TV show with Nickelodeon or Cartoon Network could have absolutely been in the cards. From there we could have had numerous sequels and spin-offs, tons of merchandising, and maybe even a movie with famous actors shoehorned in. Not that the Psychonauts IP is in a bad place now. An acquisition from Microsoft puts Double Fine in a cushy position, and Psychonauts 2 was released to just as much critical acclaim as the original. But it's interesting to think about what could have been, had things been just a little different. It's awesome that a game like Psychonauts didn't get forgotten after poor initial sales, and it speaks to how great the title is. There's definitely a future for Psychonauts, and it'll be exciting to see where the franchise goes from here.